So this is what we had for the high-res model of this guy over here. Little example with the colors. This is what we're going for. Uh, what I did in the last streams was to decimate the character, um, unwrap each decimations with uh, Resume, and um, I exported everything everything that was uh, decimated as a low mesh and everything that's uh, well it's made in ZBrush like this it was uh, exported as high res I've put everything here in uh, max everything has uh, UVs also with UDIMs and uh, technically now I'm ready to bring them into uh, Substance Painter and uh, paint them. Well, let's bake them first. So what I'll do is I'll just grab everything that I have here. I'll export them. So I'm gonna create a new file. Um, actually, no, I can just keep it here. So let's call it uh, frog. Frog painter. So it's going to take a little while to export because it's uh, still, it's a huge file. We're talking about a file of something like 11 million and that's the low mesh the low poly and this file we're going to open in substance also by the way something that i did because i have a I have a bug in uh substance where uh, if mm, if my windows is uh displaying thumbnails of my icons it actually crashes in substance and it's a bit of a pain in the ass. But um, yeah, if you actually tell Windows to never display your thumbnails for icons, it makes a substance not crash. And this is because I have a software, like my 3D printing software, that actually makes window, uh, Windows display thumbnails for 3D uh, files. And this is exactly what makes it crash. It took me a while to figure out, but here we are. So technically I should not need Max anymore. I'll just keep it open just in case. This I won't need for sure. Uh, so I'll close it. Well, I mean, I might need it, but most probably not. All right, so let's start a new... Uh, New, uh, new project. Um, hmm, there was a, an option here I needed to make sure that I use correctly. I'm not sure if it's still a good one. Use UV tile workflow. I think that's what it is. Reserve UV tile layout for material. Da, da, da. I think I just need to keep it also in OpenGL. That's fine. Document resolution. Well, I mean, that's, I think I can always change it. So it's been a while that I did that technique. So uh, anyways, I'll just leave it to that for the moment. Is there a reason? You use Max instead of ZBrush to make the IDs and maps. Is there a reason you use Max instead of ZBrush to make the ideas and maps? Um, I haven't done my ideas in Max. Those colors are just the colors of the material that I assigned in Max here because before importing in ZBrush and Substance, 
you need to have uh, material assigned to every group that you're gonna Uh, gotta take note on how to make the technical aspects of game dev this interesting. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a part that's not super interesting. All right, uh, wait. It did not load my model. Fail to load three scene, loading fail. Oh, great. That's how we're gonna start my... Uh, my stream, eh? Why? Is it because there are... There are meshes that don't have UVs. Oh boy. No, that doesn't matter. No, that's not supposed to be it. Cannot be changed later, right? Oh, Fuck. <sighs> okay, is it... Is it the fiber material? Is that the problem? Let's, uh... Alright, well, cool. Let's start the stream with troubleshooting. Fucking great. Right, no fiber. It has to be that. Everything else has UVs on. Hey, hey, hey. Thanks for the sub. That's pretty cool. Jacob. Hi. <laughs> Ooh, seven months. That's pretty cool. Thanks, man. Is it because of the troubleshooting? You were like, all right, let's go. Let's give him a sub. Let's encourage him. <laughs> yeah, that's all, but that's what it was. I'm sure that I put UVs on the on the fibers though, so it shouldn't I don't see why it should be a problem. But we can always work without it. Ah, uh, was 3D art not using the multi-map exporter. Um Well I I'm not one hundred percent what the multi-map exporter does, but I'm fairly certain that it uh, does not uh, let me do everything that I need to do, especially when it comes to uh, applying the uh, normal weighting that I did in Max as well in my last stream. So yeah, plus uh, I needed to have um, UVs done in Rhizom. Uh, it's interesting when the person is visibly knowledgeable in the craft and the accent helps. <laughs> my accent. <laughs> I don't like my accent, but thanks. That's cool. That's cool, cool, cool. Alright, so now it loads. So it was the fibers that was the problem. Now I want to just check for a second my fibers because I I'm pretty certain that I have UVs on those. I mean, the UVs are complete crap, but... Those are UVs. It's fine. Anyways, eh. doesn't matter. The, the 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 fibers can just be like a solid color that I assign in the, the materials later. So uh, no matter. No matter. So all right. Well, there you go. We have our uh, our substance file here. So the first thing we do is baking. It's baking time. Okay, I'll uh, just change a few things. I'm gonna change that for uh, Studio Tomoko. I just find it's a more uh, interesting uh, scene, lighting scene. 
Um, I don't need to really change anything here, so that's fine. As far as I remember, I don't have to change anything, no. Maybe again, change the depth of field. Not depth of field, sorry, but the field of view. Eh, doesn't change much. Actually, it does a bit. I don't like it when the uh, field of view is too, um, like, fish islands. Alright, cool. So, for the baking, we're gonna have to bake each section here. So, if you look at the texture set list, you can see that like all my objects have their U-dims, which is perfect. And, uh, yeah. So, one at a time, uh, texture settings here. So, we're gonna want to uh, bake in 4K. Or actually, you want, no. We're going to work in 2K. We're going to bake in 4K. Because um, the thing is, um, I'm making a lot of UDIMs, but I would rather actually work in uh, 2K if possible. And uh, have the... Uh... Well, actually, you know what? Let me just confirm something. I'll actually open another scene from something that I did in the past, and that will refresh my memory on something <laughs> the four horsemen sub giveaway <laughs> maybe they're too close to the border maybe Maybe that would be a, a good guess. So let's uh, let's open uh, it's a bit of a heavy scene, but uh, it's gonna give an idea of like what we're going for. Uh, what does this mesh wireframe look like? Uh, it's a decimation, so it's extremely high. Well, wait. It's hard to tell because, uh, like I said, something like that. It's very high, but it's not too high. <coughs> Sorry, it's not too high that I cannot uh, bake it. Um, so where am I? Okay, cool. Let's uh, remove one of the two heads. There you go. It's still loading its uh, the shaders and everything, but this is the uh, texture scene for uh, death of the four horsemen it's still loading and you're, you're gonna see it's also it's very sharp it's because there's like a sharpen filter before I export because I find that uh, Arnold renderer sometimes it blurs the details and this helps it to, to keep it so uh, yep yeah. so this is my scene I did uh, death without the horse and without the bays the horse and the bays are on other files. Alright. It's still loading, it's still lagging. Once it's fully loaded, it's gonna stop lagging, but uh, for the moment, that's what it is. Come on. Alright, so technically, if you look at the texture setting, uh, you can see that the size is uh, 2K. 
here, but actually every baked map are 4K. Um, how does it say my texture size? Well, if, you, if I go in my bake options, you see I'm baking at 4K here. So it kind of like gives you a, an idea. So yeah, I just wanted to confirm this detail. And uh, yeah, resolution is fine enough. I think the resolution of my uh, uh, frog character is going to be a little bit higher than that. But yeah. And uh, yes, th this mesh is like very, very intense in terms of like the wireframe. Maybe I can show you. And uh, Substance is really able to, ha to handle it uh, very well. Mm. See, it's very high. All over. Still works. I mean, the, the painter file is very, is, is huge. I think it's like 15 gig, 15 gigabyte just for like this guy here. So it, it does create some very heavy uh, files, but eh, it's exportable, works well. It's all part of my rendering technique. Rendering technique that if you wish to see in a tutorial, instead of like seeing in streams like this, visit at the bottom, the link here and visit our Chaos Masons page or the, our Gumroad and you can buy the tutorial that's called Mother, which is the one where we teach uh, this technique. Um, yep, yep, yep. So let's uh, let's uh, continue and do the same thing. Let's bake the, uh, let's start with the skin parts. All right. So uh, we are going to tell him to bake in. Oh yeah, that's true. I'm going to do something first okay so what i'm gonna do is i'm just going to simulate a bake i'm not really gonna bake for real but what i want to do is i just want to load all of my high polys so everything that's called hp i'm going to load all of them and simulate simulate that i'm baking them simply because I want, if I need to rebake, I won't need to wait that long. Okay, do I have everything that's called the high poly? Yeah, okay. And I'm actually going to just bake this like this so right now I'm not baking anything okay I just well I mean yes I am baking something but it's it's really like a throwaway bake that I do simply uh, because I want to load in substance I want to load my my um, high-res bake files so that if I need to rebake it's gonna take like an instant to rebake uh, just because I loaded my high res correctly. So this is a little technique that I use. Like normally I would go like do something in the meantime uh, because like this might take like maybe five minutes or whatever. Uh, maybe more, we'll see. But but uh, this five minute is gonna save like a lot so you can go on fucking whatever uh, Instagram in the meantime or play Play your new game of choose your own adventure on your phone. There we go. That's what I'm doing these days. <laughs> I got this choose your own adventure game on the on my phone, and yeah, I really like it. It's super nostalgic. I used to do that when I was a kid, and I never figured out that they would they would create apps for that now. But meanwhile, let's read the chat. So, well, what's the okay? Yeah. Uh, interesting. Never seen you go for UV's painter workflow. Uh, yeah, no, it's pretty new. I just uh, learned it um, like uh, this summer. It's uh, Cedric figured out the workflow and he taught me. Uh, 
No, I, I uh, yeah, I used to do uh, BPR rendering a lot, uh, but uh, yeah, no, recently I discovered that technique and I really like it because I can do like turn it around renders as well. So um, yeah, because I figured out that I'm like I'm spending a lot of time in 3D. And if I don't really maximize the effect of having the character like in 3D and showing him in 3D, I'm kind of like wasting time. Like why wouldn't I do like a, an image instead? Uh, what game? Uh, what game I play on my phone? The It's called, um, uh, geez, I don't remember the name. Let me check. I got it right here. It's called D and D style choice game. D and D as in Dungeon and Dragons. D and D style choice game. I think the name of the company is like it's Delight Games. I think Delight Games. And uh, yeah, it's it's pretty cool. It's like it's well written. It's the, the adventures are cool. You basically just like choose a few things. You don't build up the stats of your guy or anything. You just choose uh, like the actions you want to take depending on what you think is the wisest for the type of character you're playing at that moment or that sort of stuff. Uh, yeah, really fun. Really fun. So, uh, so yeah, and the... Um, so for this that I'm doing right now, uh, we uh, you're going to notice that once I'm done with like this portion, uh, the rest of the baking is going to go extremely, extremely fast, but there's still a few things I'm going to be careful with. Like, for example, I realized that when you're baking all the maps for a character, the maps that tends to crash the most is the curvature map. And um, I kind of like bake my curvature map uh, separately because of that. And also the AO, I don't bake the AO using the high res model. I actually bake the AO using like the low model itself. So this is also going to be something I'm going to be baking separately. You'll, uh, you'll see that once I'm going to uh, start, uh, start baking. In the meantime, since we're waiting after a bake, if there's anybody that has a, a question about anything, you can go ahead. I've been watching a, a uh, walkthrough, uh, a playthrough of uh, Scorn recently. It's a pretty fucking uh, cool looking game, seriously. I don't have really a lot of time to play video games these days, but uh, that one looked uh, looked pretty cool. It's kind of like like not too long, but yeah, it was nice. I did play Gotham Knight. I think I talked about it last time, since we've we we made so many characters for that game, and uh, I actually had fun. I don't understand the negative critiques necessarily. Like I think it was like a a bit too um, too uh, harshly judged, but uh, no, I had fun. It was cool. It was really nice to see our characters in the game. I think that, uh, I mean, we did a good job, and uh, the guys uh, putting them in the engine and everything did also a good job. If you want to speed up the baking part, you could go for Marmoset Works Wonders if you have an RTX card. Now nah, I don't want to use Marmoset. I want to use uh, Painter. I don't want to mix too much software together, but uh, that's uh, cool. Thanks for the uh, for the idea, though. Also, um, I've been using that technique for a while, and uh, the the curvatures are like a bit different in Marmoset and in Painter, and uh, I'm uh, I'm just like. I have a few like smart materials that I prefer to uh, just don't have to tweak like too much. 
Hello from Russian CG brother. Love to watch your streams while scum day at night. Well, that's what it's for. I'm happy that you actually uh, that you're using it for what I intended. Hanging out with a few people at night, doing my streams and stuff. All right, this is a uh, this is getting long. This is getting long. 3 a.m. here, yeah, yeah, that's what I was figuring out. I was like, it's gonna be so late for Jacob. <laughs> Man, I use, I, I wish I could actually just hang out until 3 a.m. like I used to do back in the days, but uh, my uh, my kid is waking up relatively early, so uh, <laughs> I mean, I was falling asleep just reading him like a story, so he falls asleep. I was like, my eyes were closing, but I was like, nah, man, I need to, I need to go do my stream. <laughs> Warrior. Mm. That's true. That's true. I forgot about that. Congrats again, Jacob. I'm just going to tell you one thing. Um, just try to get a lot of sleep before he's born. Like in the in the weeks before he's born, just get some good sleep because the first weeks are uh, are challenging. I mean, you'll you're, you you'll do it, you'll do it well, you'll get over it. It's not the end of the world. It's not the end of the world, but um, you're gonna make yourself a little favor by uh, just starting this adventure well rested. I'll say. Especially, I mean, at the hospital, when it happens, it's like you have to stay up for, like, much more than 24 hours. Uh, so, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a gauntlet in that sense. But it's all good. It's all good. You know what? I'm going to say that for every everybody that's thinking about having kids or that are going to have kids and stuff. Um don't listen to the people that are like oh my god it's so hard oh it's the hardest thing in you like oh you don't know what's coming to you like it's just fuck off seriously like it's gonna be awesome it's gonna be great uh it's gonna be extremely hard but there is like all the other side of like like it brings something new to your life it's super exciting it's really fun um it's very validating and it, it like opens something in yourself that you didn't have before at least it did for me so like all the hardship and everything and everything that people are saying it's like don't don't listen to the bad vibes of it it's like it's a great thing it's cool i prefer to actually like encourage people in that sense rather than just yeah just being like oh pessimistic about the whole thing and yeah I hate that. I hate, I hate that when when parents talk to new parents and they're like just like fucking doomsday about everything. Anyways, whatever. I was saying that just because it bugged me when it happened to me. You know? It's like it's like, dude, I don't say that to somebody. Like, let them figure it out. But also, like, don't like make them stress out about like the thing. It's like, let them enjoy it on the moment and not dreading it, basically. So the thing is, be prepared, but don't dread the situation. There we go. Because it's fun, it's cool, it's new, it's exciting. Alright, well, that, um, that baking is taking a sweet fucking time. I don't know if I should have... Uh, do that in advance like i told myself oh, i'm gonna do it during the stream so that people see really the entire length and process of the thing but yeah that one is getting a bit uh a bit long it's like when you're getting married and everybody everyone says there's still time to get out yeah i know that's fucking i hate that seriously like as long as like you're not ge getting like married to the devil and everybody's like, you're making a fucking mistake. 
but like you yeah, know people that are generally just like oh you still have time to get out <laughs> that's stupid <laughs> just fucking let people enjoy life like some people are so sour about their situation and they just need to shit on somebody else to bring them to their level and that's like I hate that I absolutely hate that yeah like I mean the greatest thing you can do in life is try to elevate people right like what like why would you try to bring down someone make them afraid of something or just like ugh, I don't know I don't know oh boy hey you know what everyone I'm gonna put a little uh I'm gonna put a little pause on that I'm gonna be right back I'm gonna grab another uh another drink and uh maybe in the meantime this will have finished so uh, I'll be right back What did I tell you, hey? I just needed to leave for this to finish. Now it says non-responding, but even if it crashes, it doesn't matter because uh, because it did create the the substance high-res files that I wanted to create, so that the next time it's uh, faster. <laughs> oh no, baking! Run away, Mo. You still have time. <laughs> Doing good in you. <laughs> Alright, you know what? I'm gonna close the program, I'm gonna reopen it. Like I said, I, I did not lose anything, so it doesn't matter. Mo, you still have time to run away. I'm reopening the software, but once the baking has started, you cannot leave. Alright, new. Oh, let's grab the our no fiber mesh. I wish I had the fucking fiber mesh in my uh let's try to um shrink the UVs, like you said, maybe they're like too much on the uh, outside.
it's really a caprice to try to have the fiber the fiber meshes go in there but uh I am pig headed. All right, let's do it. Fingers crossed. Come on, come on. But yeah, just to show you what I meant by uh, I didn't lose the files. So if I go into my uh, my big folder here so you see for every high poly file that I have a oh cool it opened for every high poly file that I have there's the uh, the ass bin which is the stupidest extension ever stupidest extension name I should say ass bin so um, there's an ass bin so now this means that uh, uh, substance will be able to bake faster so yeah uh, West 3D art uh, good uh, you were right on uh, your proposition that maybe they're too close to the border. So congrats, congrats on that. You earn my, you win my, no, you earn my eternal respect. Oh, cool. We got this guy here. So we're now we're ready to start the uh, the baking process and everything. Let's start with the skin. So let's bake. Like I said, we're going to bake. Um, I I'm not really gonna use thickness. It's not really. Uh, it doesn't really work for for me for making SSS. So let's just keep position curvature. I'm gonna do alone. Ambience. I'm gonna do alone. Uh, ID. I need to tell him to use a vertex ID, a vertex color. Click apply to all. Boom boom. Back to common, we're gonna do 4K, we're gonna bake at 001 because of the size of my mesh. Maybe I'm even missing a zero, we'll see. Loading an high res, we're gonna load the skin high res. Uh, and we are going to go for anti-aliasing 2X. And I think that's it. Yeah, no cage. Dilation width, I don't remember needing to change that. Okay, let's just bake. And it's supposed to bake pretty fast. So you see how, how fast it goes? So that's, uh, it's baking the ID map. My ID map, uh, sometimes I'm just using it as a base, uh, base albedo, base color. Sometimes it'll be used for making my masks as well. All right, so we're done. So there's already this that is baked. Hooray. At first glance, it seems like it baked correctly. So that's cool. All right, so for the missing maps, now we're gonna bake uh, just the curvature. I 
because like I said the curvature um, at the size of the meshes were were baking like the high res are like 25 million the low meshes are uh, 1.5 million and the uh, curvature map sometimes like has problems so uh, if you're baking it like in a batch but you see if you're baking it alone no problem uh, the ambient occlusion I'm gonna bake it at the very end we're gonna jump to another uh, something else here so rope I'm gonna get rope HP bake we're just gonna go through one at a time like this Boom, the rope is on. Ooh, the rope. Okay, no, I was, I just have the curvature. Mm -hmm. Let's make our rope. The rope, I didn't have a good resolution for my uh, my high poly, so I really hope it's not gonna look like shit. And I think it does, will look like shit. Oof. Yes, it does look like shit. Well, that's unfortunate. I'm actually going to need to fix this. All right, well, I mean, I guess that we're going to need to start to go into uh, troubleshooting mode. So there we go. I thought this was going to be an easy stream, but uh, the gods of baking don't want it to be an easy stream let's still save this file fill it in me hello okay so that's saved so now we're gonna need to fix this so okay Let's go back to Max. And if for people that listened to my last stream, you probably saw that I actually knew that there could be a problem with this mesh. And if we look at the Texel ratio of this mesh here, compared to the Texel ratio of, let's say this, you can see that there is, it's not the same. And I was like, ah, uh, maybe since it's like, just like a fibery, like, material that is going to look okay but no uh, the UVs they don't want to um, the UVs don't want to actually um, wrap correctly so we're going, we're going to need to fix this and the way that like I'm gonna go by fixing it is I'm gonna go back in ZBrush and uh, start at the source And I'm going to attempt to um, boolean all the meshes together for the ropes. So actually, let's just go into at least the music is motivating me to pursue and fix this issue. I'm running after this issue like it's in a car chase in Cyberpunk. Uh, yeah, so ZBrush here, ropes, there we go. Hey Marco, which is the reason, which is the reason to upload only one by one high poly mesh for baking? That's much better. 
Um, well, I mean, I did uh, load them all in one shot just to create the uh, asbin file, but when it comes to um, when it comes to baking them, I find that the bake by name just uh, often just crashes or doesn't work, and uh, it, I waste more time trying to make that work than just baking the parts one by one. All right, so we're gonna duplicate this, and we're going to do a boolean for the rest. So to create a boolean, I just need to have two subtool because it doesn't work with just one subtool. So we're gonna have both of those subtools here, and we're gonna boolean all of that together. And I think it might help for when it comes to um, the uh, unwrapping the UVs. So yep, let's boolean that. Go in live boolean, boolean here, make boolean mesh. How much space do you have on your drive? Uh, well, I you know, I got like a tera terabyte uh, hard drive, so uh, I got a lot, and you need a lot for those kind of projects. All right, so this is my boolean, my boolean uh, result. So everything is boolean together. I'm just gonna make sure I don't have floating meshes. So you see, everything is invisible. This means that I have um, like some bad polygons somewhere. So I just switch, now they're hidden, and I just delete what is hidden. And this is my boolean mesh. I can delete those. Boom, and I'm gonna call this one rope boolean. And I'm gonna export. I'm gonna export it into rope boolean LP. Save this file here. All right. Let's keep that open in the meantime. Uh, import it here. Uh, no, actually, before importing it here, we're going to import it in Resume. Sorry, I'm going to resize this so you guys see. Load. Um, rope, rope, rope. Boolean. All right, so first step 4K, but eight of buffer is still fine. Okay, my computer froze for a second. Uh, this here, enable. Yeah, stream froze, eh? Okay. Anyways, let's uh, unwrap this here. So, yeah, last time it took uh, a little while to unwrap this because um, they're like basically like this entire set of meshes is just very long tubes. And um, now by like merging them together, it creates less tubes at the very least. I'm hoping that it can be uh, somewhat fast to um, unwrap those, but we'll see. But we can see that it's actually running through every meshes here. So we're not like wasting wasting our time. If it um, it does not fix the issue, I could try to um, uh, to uh, Dynamesh 
like everything and uh, try to um, to uh, redecimate it and bake it. But I, uh, I have a feeling that it's going to be fine this time because uh, Yeah, we'll see. The idea is, is uh, that, like with Rism, if you're just like using like this more this method of export or of unwrap and export, um, it the only kind of like meshes where it's going to have a problem are meshes where like the meshes are very very long, and they don't have like a lot of like loops to cut the meshes. So, uh, yeah, no, it creates uh, issues sometimes. But this here, this should be okay. Hey, Rick Dragon, thanks for the sub. That's pretty cool. Pretty cool. Thanks a lot. We're gonna, once it's uh, unwrapped, we're gonna re-export it here. See how it's uh, texel ratio uh, fares compared to the uh, the rest. And if we get something good, we should be okay with the rest of the baking and whatnot. Uh, that being said, while we're waiting for this to uh, unwrap, oh, well, you see, we're already at 20%. Uh, as I said in, the, in my last stream, the moment you get past 10%, it means that you're good for the rest and the rest is gonna go fast. It's really at 10% 10, 10 that sometimes it like lags and stuff. So see, 31%. I think we're gonna be good for this time. I miss being in class listening to you speak on wraps and bakes. This scratches the itch. <laughs> nice. Thirty-three, forty-six, almost there, almost there. Is it worth it to bake something in the meantime? It's just gonna ask more processing power. I'm not sure. The chain mail I'm not going to uh, be uh, baking, nor the uh, the fibers, but the rest I will. Yeah, you see how uh, it's like, it's really not a good resolution for the rope. I did a good thing to test that in advance. Normally it's not a problem because I can always like reopen um, the FBX with the new fixes and not lose like my entire work. 62, we're almost there. Sam Media, hello, hello. Welcome to the stream. Welcome to the baking stream. Something that would have been very, very topical is that I am absolutely high and wasted during bakes. Doing bakes when you're baked. I think I would have liked probably bad trip. Yeah, I'm not making cookies, but sometimes when I do bakes, I wish I would. All right, we're good. We're good. It's now distributing. It's distributing on one set of um, of UDIMs, so it's not like preferable. 
like I'm sure I need like at least three UDIMs for this for the ropes if it unwrapped correctly this time that is I might need to also like maybe reduce the margins for this because uh, I feel that it's probably going to actually like split it in so many small pieces that the spacing in between will be kind of like a pain yeah, you see, yeah, it's a lot of spacing. I'll do that right away. I'll change the uh, the margin for. Uh, we're gonna be bold. I'm gonna say four. Yeah, five. Not that bold. Uh, and let's go with three UDIMs. Three pack. When it splits the um, the mesh in this many pieces, it's oh crap! Two UDIMs. I wanted to do three. Okay, let's just see what it gives me. Save as VX movie. Huh? No, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna need three or four. Let's test. World Boolean LPUV, there you go. Now please, dear lord. Eh, it's, it's getting there, but it's still too big. Alright, you know what? Let's go four. And let's do it with the four of margin. There you go. Repack, please, sir. Wow, going for ultra high detail here. Well, I want some decent details, and um, the um, this mesh is pretty problematic in its nature. So I, I'll need to actually like waste a bit of space to get something good. But we're doing something that's not made for real time necessarily. Or at least the part that's not made for real time is the part where I, um, instead of doing a retopology, I do a decimation and the UVs are pretty like, just like automatic UVs from Rhizome. Uh, but the rest of the process, like the high res and the baking and the texturing, is all stuff that's like pretty strat standard to the industry. You know? But since that, at the end, I'm doing the lighting and rendering with Arnold. I don't need to answer to all the rules of retopology and whatnot. So, Rob Boolean LPUV. That's a. Uh, Override this file. Reopen it here. I'm not using this for animation. This is why the character is already made in pose. Oh crap, it's still not... Still not good. Yeah, this is um, this is fucking stupid. Okay, crap. We're gonna need to really go waste some uh, some space for this, eh? Well, you know what? We have to do it. We have to do it. Hmm. Hmm. I'm almost thinking if I should not re-unwrap. I 
maybe change the stretcher limit. I don't know, eh? I'm going to try unwrapping with uh, UV Master, see what it gives me. Well, okay, that's probably good, going to be a good a good resolution. Maybe I don't need to uh, do the, uh, the UVs and ZBrush. Hey! Pramad, thanks for the sub. That's really cool. Hey, Marco. Hey, 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 hey. Sweet, sweet, sweet. As you see, like, the numbers are kind of, like, the same size, so... It was a bit overkill in terms of, like, how many maps it takes for this, but... Like, maybe, like, ZBrush would have done, like, a better job into, like... As of, like, not cutting it into so many smaller pieces, or maybe some option in, uh... In Rhythm, but, uh, in order to, uh... Not waste too much time here... I'm just gonna take what it gives me. Let's do another, uh, bake test on this and see, uh... Or at least confirm that things are good now. So, uh, where is my armor material? This is my rope material. Boom, boom, boom. This is the armor. There we go. So let's uh, save this file. Come on. All right. Port selected, we don't need that anymore. Let's crush this one here. Ooh, uh, little gift right there. Oh, gift a mo. How nice. Saved. Now, back to substance. Let's uh, project configuration. Upload the file. Uh, update the file. OpenGL compute tangent space. Using the tile is the same as before. Import setting. Import camera preserve strokes position on mesh. There was none. So uh, auto unwrap. Why auto unwrap? Yeah, hopefully where I don't need to well I mean it's not a big deal if I need to rebake the skin but uh, let's say I was like freer in my pro in my project and I figured out that I needed to change the UVs for this and go back here I would I would hope that this um, import works I've seen it work pretty well most of the time but like sometimes like not really working well either so um, always better to check for um, for uh, problematic meshes, at least at the beginning, right? And me, my rope was the problematic mesh, so yeah. All right, 
So yeah, it seems like we didn't lose uh, anything, so that's good. Ah. So you see, now we have the ropes here. Oh, I forgot to do something on the ropes. Fudge. Forgot to smooth them. Rapidy crap. All right. Weight and normals. Edge. 100. Convert to editable mesh. All right. So that I need to fix. So sorry for wasting your precious time, everyone. That was a uh, stupid mistake. But I mean, it's, it's kind of like a process where there is like so much like technical things and small like parts or whatever. It's so easy to just like forget something and having to restart all over. At least now I got a little soundtrack to help with uh, filling up the dead times. Yeah, this is the hangout part. These last streams have been very hangouty. <laughs> All right, let's do it again. Project configuration. Let's fucking go. I think I'm gonna have spent like 20 minutes troubleshooting that one mesh, but at the same time, kind of like a good thing because um, like a lot of time that it happened on my stream when I find like a problem and I have to solve it in front of people but at least it gives you kind of like an idea of like what I go like how do I go about to uh, fix those things so not the best material for a tutorial but for a stream where I show my technique I think it's probably meant for that it's kind of like almost a good thing that I run into problems and that sort of stuff. Yeah, you get to see that it's not that, that easy all the time. Whether there's solutions and whatnot. All right, good. So you see now like the mesh is actually smoothed and that's what I wanted. So we're good. If I look at my normals, there you go. Well, I mean the normals of the ropes are all uh, busted and everything but the ones on the skin is still good so you see I didn't lose my bakes although it would not have been a problem let's go back and rope and boom suppress everything go back to bake we still have all my options there and let's continue the baking there we go back on track and this time the resolution should be good. I hope. I'm pretty certain it will. That's so many U dims for something that's so small. It's so stupid. Yeah really the best thing to be optimal I mean it's not a, a technique that's really optimal in terms of like space it's more like optimal in terms of a uh, time and you don't care about doing the retopo and everything but um, would have would have been like really optimal to get better UVs uh, would have, would be would be to play in Rizum and get like uh, get it to not separate it in so many small parts. Hey chaos, that looks amazing. I was wondering how do you go about UVs? Well, I just I just showed it. It's Rizum. If you uh, if you just 
join the stream, I would say just uh, check either the, st the the last stream where I where I show in like exclusively uh, UVs, or just like rewind a few minutes ago. I was in I was in Rizum actually. Okay, so it's it looks dirty. How does it look with material? No, that's going to be good. That's going to be fine. Yeah, that's going to be good enough. Yeah, that's good. Perfect. Okay. We we fixed it. Hooray. Well, now let's do curvature. And um yeah, AO I will do at the very end. You'll see uh, you'll see why. It's really satisfying to see a mesh that's completely baked and ready to be textured. Right, next, leather. See, now we can get back into our beat. Leather to HP. Boom. Let's make the curvature. So yeah, the um, the distance, the ray distance is. Uh, I pretty much always use this uh, 0 0.001 because the me the size of my characters are pretty much always the same. Hey, I wonder if I baked the idea of the ropes correctly because it's a mesh I re-imported. So I don't know if it remembered to bake the vertex color for this. Hmm. I'll need to go uh, double check on that. Yeah, once I'm going to be done with the bakes, the next stream is going to be about texturing. It might take a few uh, streams to do the texturing correctly because. Um, it's been a while that I did the texture for a um, a medieval character, especially one with the uh, uh, PBR. The... So I might actually myself need to re-explore and relearn a few things. Once the textures are going to be done, we're going to be setting up the lighting scene then rendering and then boom finished <laughs> in a moment you got the the baking to go well yeah it's uh it can get pretty tedious i feel your pain So yeah, I got copyright claim on my two last videos on YouTube. I'm thinking it's because of the uh, the playlist I was using. It says no copyright playlist, but maybe it wasn't this copyright free. Now I am actually using uh, YouTube's studio audio library. We'll see if it's actually better. All right. Yeah. Well, the yeah the the rope did bake their ideas, so we're good with that. The gloves did bake correctly as well, so that's also good. Uh, next is uh, this other leather piece, leather one. Oops. Leather one HP. There you go. And bake. Little by little, 
But you see we're already like halfway done in baking the model. Like a little less than halfway done, but whatever. So if you remove the entire part of the ropes that I had to redo, um, the baking process is super fast. It's really, really fast. Well, I mean, it's really fast for what we're accomplishing, which is technically like a fully textured model with the uh, real materials and and whatnot. There we go, there we go. Curvature now. That's the baking process uses GPU. Um, actually, actually, I am not certain. I think it's more like CPU based. Um, I think Jacob that was here earlier knows about this. Or maybe like anybody here that maybe has the answer, but the re reality is that I'm not sure if um, Substance uses GPU to bake or CPU. I think it's CPU. Getting uh, pretty close to. Uh... Having everything baked. Yeah, it's uh, it didn't crash. It's just uh, it had a little bit of a problem to uh, process the curvature. Like I said, the curvature is the hardest one to bake. But uh, like, if I would have tried to bake this uh, in one shot with like every maps, including the curvature, uh, that would have crashed. But since I'm baking curvature separately we're good so a little tips for you out there
I'm actually going to save my file because losing all of that baking can be a pain in the ass. And the thing is, the more that I bake the model, the heavier the file gets. But one thing to reassure you is that once you're done baking the model, um, since I'll be pretty much using like 2K files uh, because of I'm using many UDIMs, but I'm using 2K files, like small files. Seems like uh, it's favored when rendering to do it this way. Big textures are a bit uh, heavier and stuff. Not really a good thing. But um, uh, what was I going to say? Anyways, I was just going to say, oh yeah, yeah, exactly. It's that when you're done like baking, the uh, size, the file size of substance is very heavy, but uh, it doesn't really get more heavy when you add the textures on top. So like if you bake something and it's like, oh, it's, it's already like 10 gigabytes, like it, it's not going to get like... It's gonna probably get to maybe like 11 gigabytes, but not more than that. Except if you start like importing texture in the scene, if you just use like all the procedural smart material stuff, masks, blah, 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 doesn't get much heavier. I'm not gonna bake the chain mail. Okay, almost done. Let's save this. It's probably gonna take a little while since there's a lot of maps in there. The color of the bake looks amazing. Like a sick of the like, toads situation. <laughs> it would be appropriate. So you see, saving time pretty long. There we go. We're back on track. So let's now bake the cape. Almost there. The same way as uh, decimating the model or doing the, the UVs are kind of like the longest and most boring part of this process. Uh, just get yourself a good movie a good uh, walk through to look at personally what I would do is I would probably just do like chores while I do this or um, what I did last time because I, I did this entire process with my um, with my four horsemen and went with with my uh, archangels so I had like seven characters to go through all of that was very long so like I um I decided to do my gym at home instead of going to the gym because I have a set of dumb dumbbells that I can strip and I have like a, at least like 50 pounds two times 50 pounds so I can do like a lot of exercises so I just did my gym at home 
so I just like went through um, like the entire baking of, of a few characters just while doing uh, doing my reps. So that was cool. Mariano CV art. Thanks for the comment. That's appreciated. So we're going to do the curvature for this one. This one I think might actually also lag. So bear with me if if this one also uh, kind of like semi freezes. doesn't seem to freeze that much. It froze a little bit. The blade is going to be an easy one. I remember it was a smaller smaller file. As you can see, Almost done. Yeah, very close to the end. So yeah, I guess I'll just take a, a second to um, to talk about something that's uh, really important to me. Uh, recently, we uh, we just released uh, the pre-orders the pre-orders for uh, the collectibles of um, the war uh, the collectibles for the to collectibles figurine for war of the four horsemen. And um, actually, I'll I think I'll just show you a little uh, a little something that's going to be a little bit more demonstrative. Uh, maybe while this file is saving, actually, because I'll need to save right there. Is baking the curvature for the armor section? I think might actually be a bit of a. Um, A more uh, how I can say uh, sketchy one to bake.
All right, we're good. And we're just gonna need the curvature for this one. So let's just save here. And since it's gonna take a little while to save, let me just show you something. Um, so, okay. So some of you might already know uh, the Four Horsemen series that I worked on. And uh, what I want to show you is uh, this website over here. So I think some display shoe over here. All right. So I have this website, neoapocalypse.com. So like I said, some of you might already follow uh, what I do. Uh, so you might know about this, but some of you might not know. Um, so basically, uh, like me and some people at Chaos Masons and some friends, we uh, created this universe called Neo Apocalypse, where a couple of our groups of characters that we created, that's where they reside. That's where, that's the world they're part of. Um, the Four Horsemen is one, the Archangels as well. I'm creating the third groups now, uh, the uh, Elementalists. And um, I am. Uh, I'm super excited about that. It's something that I worked on for so long and uh, I'm, I'm still going to be working on this and adding to the roster of characters from this universe. And I spent a lot of time drawing, like uh, not drawing, but writing the backstory for the people so that like everybody has like a, like a backbone. All the stories have a backbone uh and uh it's it's um yeah so this neo apocalypse thing uh, you can learn a lot just by going on neo-apocalypse.com and uh the reason why we launched this website is because we actually have one of the characters from the series it can now be pre-ordered as a collectible figure so uh, I, I won't like uh, dilly dally too much, but uh, you can visit the website by yourself. Uh, but you can learn about the Four Horsemen. Uh, the Elementalists are coming soon. The Archangels is one of the other groups. Uh, you can, like I said, collect the statues from the Apocalypse. You can buy them at the XM Studios store uh, because XM Studios is actually my collaborator in this, my partner in producing them as statues, taking my design in making them look awesome as statues. So we'll get there. A little bit about us and XM, little quotes, a couple of my friends that helped me to produce all of this. Um, so yeah, if you go on in the lore section, you can read about like, what's the, let's say like the prequel that leads to this era of the new apocalypse. I'll let you visit the website for this. Here you can discover about the divisions. So the Four Horsemen, the Elementalists, the Archangels, who they are, that sort of stuff. Who each of the characters from each cast are as well. And you can actually uh, see much more images by clicking on these uh, links here, which I will go to after. And here is what's coming next. Thanks for the follow, by the way. And you can actually know more about the characters that are coming next and such. So let's uh, let's look at one of the characters here. For example, War. Let's start with him. So War is uh, well. This is you see like the turntable here. This is basically I'm showing you the the technique that I used to create those renders. So I'm not. It's not just like a shameless plug that I'm doing. I'm actually explaining. Um, what's the the goal <laughs> like what's the the potential of this technique uh so this is yeah this is a turntable that i created using uh, this uh, technique here uh and this um statue or this this character um was produced into a painted statue of uh, one fourth scale 
and it's available at the on the XM store. Like if you click by the statue here, you can see this is actually a real size statue and everything. And I'm super excited. I saw it in person and it's so rad. Uh, here's a couple of like stats of like who the characters are. I've always loved to uh, have the characters like have like their own like specs and everything so you can actually like see like who which one is the character that represents me the most and whatnot. And here you have a couple of uh, renders using the exact same technique. All the graphics uh, have been done by uh, my friend Stefan or a B sub that's his artist name everything that's like graphic design everything a couple of pictures here you can pretty much go through like a couple of the renders that I did you can zoom in as well and I'm pretty happy with the results of these uh, these renders and uh, here, yeah, see, you can see like the actual statue. So this is an actual printed and painted statue. And uh, it's really cool that the quality is really awesome. I'm so happy about what they did. And like I said, like they're, they're massive. They're massive. It, it's really, uh, it's really something. It's really like a collectible piece. Yeah, really great. I really love how they did the metal and everything. I was so happy when I saw it in person. So anyways, yeah. Sorry, I'm, I'm kind of... <laughs> I'm almost forgetting I'm doing a stream. I'm just so, like, like, happy looking at those. So here you have all the specs, how tall they are and everything. And... Yeah, you can get all of the the four horsemen like this like i won't show ever, everything because it's going to be much too long and i'm probably done saving my uh, my project but uh there you have death death the pre-order is going to come relatively soon his stats some of the renders for death all that jazz all that fun stuff and here you have some pictures of him on the horse and everything these are the statue pictures and even the ones that are coming like uh the archangels are not produced yet but still you can see i did do the the renders as like proof of concept for them and they're going to be the the next one they're are going to be done after the uh the four horsemen and you can see they have like different like switch out for the heads and for weapons All renders done with the exact same technique I'm showing you right now. So yeah, and in about you can learn a little bit about uh, everybody that helped me. And there's also an interview that I did for anybody who missed it. Uh, I did record an interview that, that talks about the. Uh, the Apocalypse, the Four Horsemen, and all that stuff. You can view it here. It's on our YouTube as well. So yeah, that's my little uh, my little plug that I wanted to show you. I do want to play this and see it as a movie. Plus to collect them all. <laughs> Thanks. Beautiful. Thanks. Amazing work. Jaw dropping. Thanks a lot. Do you make all the hard surface stuff in ZBrush or Maya? Uh, ZBrush. Thanks for the follow. All right. Well, let's get back to what we were doing. We're almost done anyway. Let's do the curvature. It might actually lag or freeze again. So, uh, yeah.
so far, so... We're getting there, we're getting there. survive that other freeze so basically what I'm going to do now is I'm going to bake the ambient seclusion for everything and the way I'm going to go by is I'm going to load I'm actually going to load my low mesh itself to bake the ambient seclusion boom as simple as that So this, this one is actually going to need to load and create an uh, as-bin file as well. I think that like the uh, all that uh, freezes and stuff is uh, creating some uh, disconnection with the stream and everything. So yeah, it's kind of like uh, a bit stupid to, um, <laughs> to stream a baking session, but uh, you know what? whatever it needs to be done people wanted to see it and Marco delivers so you see the AO is not the most uh, precise but we're not going to need more precision with the AO anyway And another reason why I bake the AO on its own, like, when I bake the AO in, into its own, f um, on its own, like, model, it's because, like, I want the AO to actually be baked, uh, like, with the AO shared between all of the pieces and not separated. Because I baked. Uh...
The AO of the chainmail, even the AO is not looking good. I'm gonna drop the AO on the chainmail anyway. Thanks for the follow, by the way. I think I'm gonna already see a little artifact somewhere. Alright, well, see? We're done with the baking. I can see a few artifacts. We'll see in, if the texture, if this needs to be fixed. I know exactly what the problem is. We'll see later about that. Let's look at the curvature pass. All of our sweet details are here. It's good. There you go. So now it is at the image of the high res model. So everything baked pretty well all the details and everything. Very good, very good. going to be good. Oh. 
Little artifact here. Okay. Yeah, before, before going to fix all the artifacts and everything, I'll just check how they look. I'll take a mental note of like where they are and I'll just like check how they look um, with texture and everything. Like they might go away, so yeah. Everything baked pretty well. Mostly. Cool. All right. Well, yeah. So, yep. Everything's baked. Everything's baked. We're good. We're good with that. So, let's save this. And, uh, yeah, so what remains to be said? We had this max file here. Today we fixed the rope that was kind of like a pain in the ass. We baked everything. Our model is ready to be textured now. That's good, that's good. Uh, let's save my file again, just in case. Chaos Mason, is this not a game ready model? Is it more made for cinematics? Oh, it's not just, it's just made for rendering. I made the, the character in, uh, in ZBrush and I just want to have the possibility of using a BPR render for rendering it, but I don't want to have to bother with root topology and all that stuff. So I just did a uh, quick uh, method technique to, um, to get through uh, the technical and boring part and get to the good stuff, which is texturing, rendering. You can also check what's the file size for, uh, for this guy. Yeah, <laughs> you see 15, 15 gigabytes. 15 gigabytes for the uh, for just this here, this guy. But like I said, once we're going to do the textures, it's not going it's not going to go higher than uh, 15 gigabytes, uh, like 15, 16, 17, something like that. So uh, just like doing the bakes is pretty much like the bulk of it. And uh, yeah, and also like the ba the baking is the part that crashes the most. But you see, you saw like I had zero crashes. If you follow like my uh, my advice that I gave in my previous streams, or if you follow the advice uh, on the uh, the tutorial that we created. So once again, if you want to get the tutorial, go at the link at the bottom, this one or this one. Uh, go to our Chaos Store or the Gumroad page. And you can buy the tutorial called Mother, which is the one where we show this technique here, but in a more uh, succinct format than long streams that freezes. <laughs> it's just the stream that froze because of the baking. Like the rest works uh, works well. Though. But yeah, there you have it. There you have it. Pretty much going to be done for today with this. Yep, 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 yep. So, anyways, thanks for uh, thanks for joining. Thanks for uh, sticking with me through uh, all the freezing and everything. So uh, that was pretty cool. Uh, yeah, it's so boring to show that kind of stuff, but I mean, a lot of you have expressed the, um, like wanting me to show it, even if it's uh, it's kind of like a boring uh, part. So uh, yeah, so I mean, there you have it. I hope it's uh, helpful for you. Uh, I'm happy to share my my knowledge and everything. So uh, so yeah. I guess uh, 
I guess that'll be all for uh, tonight, and I'll join again. Uh, not, not I'll join, but I'll be making another video next week, uh, probably Wednesday, like usual. Uh, and uh, I'll be starting the the whole baking process. Uh, baking, <laughs> what I mean. I'm so tired. I'm fucking losing it. Uh, the whole texturing process. So, anyways, I hope you had fun, everyone, and uh, I hope that I'll see you soon.